Hey, welcome guys to my very first episode of Gang Rant. This is Vias Whisper. And today I'm doing boss battles. 15 things I think is wrong with boss battles. Boss battles are a large part of video games. Mostly in part of video games. Can't have a real good video game without a large boss battle. But there's many things wrong with boss battles. There's a lot of pet peeves about them. Especially if they're over the top or easy to do. Uh, it's just one thing. It makes the boss battle look stupid, silly. I just like wah wah wah. It is 15 things I like to rant about boss battles. Well, number one is the supplies warning. Like when you walk into this large room and you see a lot of potions, or health packs, ammo. Just generally like this is telling you warning, you're about to get your ass kicked. Next room something's like coming after you. It does this a lot in like Zelda. Zelda usually give you a little red fairy before you walk into the boss room. But it kind of not tells you a warning. Because usually boss doors have a big ass key on it. <laughs> but most fighting games, not most fighting, most shooting games will give you health packs and ammo before you face a boss. Or a raid, a horde, zombie. Zombie games will give you health packs before you face a horde. Which is always fun. Well, the next subject is the Doomsday Clock. A lot of horror games will do this, or action games. They give you a set amount of time to beat the boss, like a minute, two minutes before something blows up, or you get auto killed. It's kind of give and take, make you want to speed up your attacks, or go all in. It makes easy to make mistakes when you're on the timeline. And a lot of bosses, this is number three, a lot of bosses have the one hit kill. This one hit kill is used in RPGs. Or they can wipe out your whole team with this one hit kill. I see a lot in Brave Frontier. Like Maxwell the Creator, uh, Creator who's still Maleficent. Almost any of the large bosses or gods have the one hit kill. <laughs> you usually fix your battle very quickly because it make you guard. Put up defenses while sacrificing your attack for this turn. Gives you, gives you a lot of put more strategy into your battle. But the one hit kill is usually known, especially if it comes on turn one, which is a lot of RPGs to do it. Especially if you're facing something over boss or the last boss, but some do it on like boss one and it just kill you. <laughs> like, Oh, wow, you're a dick. Next one is special abilities. Some of these special abilities add to the boss's defense, uh, evasion, uh, like some even a poison you if you touch them, auto heals, or some abilities like in Brave Frontier, I forgot what they call it. They revive them after you hit the HP to zero. It's, it's a lot of dick moves. Uh, shield generators. Some bosses have shield shield generators. Generators is is separate from their own HP. And you have to destroy these objects, items minions before you go actually get to the extra HP 
which takes up time, resources, and attacks. Why they still attacking you? But some bosses don't. But it's a little pet peeve. This is the shield generation generators have much life as they do, and it takes a amount of time to take down those. Then take down the boss. Dominion helpers. They distract you. They hurt you. They heal them. Like if you find a big dragon like in Dragon Age, you have the little baby dragons that's trying to distract you and draw your team off to here. Are you trying to have them focus on the big monster that's trying to eat you? The oversized bosses. Like when you're this small and like this big, and you're trying to kill them, like it's compensating for something. A good example is like in God of War when you have to fight the big gods and like I forgot the, uh, Battle of Colossus uh, in a game with dragons. Skyrim really didn't have oversized dragons compared to Dragon Age. Skyrim, they were bigger than you, but they were not over these colossus, titanic dragons that easy to swallow you up in one hole. It's two different games. Resident Evil is good for that too. They starting to get the zombies, the mutations, the uh, B.O.W.s, huge, like the huge centipede, lake monster, and them big trolls in Resident Evil 5. Oh, I don't. Uh, the end boss of Resident Evil Revelations was huge. Revelations 2 was not that, the end bosses wasn't that huge, which kind of made it a little bit better than 1. But I don't like oversized bosses. I really like something that smacked me around. It's like a little bigger than me. Something that's feasible to defeat. Let's see. Multiple forms. Bosses with multiple forms, like Freezer, had like 10 forms. <laughs> it gets overly exaggerated. Like, I killed this form, then you evolved, then I killed this form, then you evolved, then you killed this form, you evolved, then you killed this form, then you evolved. Then there's some games that make if you die on one form, it takes you all the way back to the last one. I mean, the first one. It's, ah. But some games, like Final Fantasy, you kill one, they let you auto save, and you go to the next one, and you get a cutscene in between. You see them evolve, stretch out. Resident Evil is good for that too. Most of the final bosses, you have to go through stages. Like Resident Evil, I think it was two. And also, there's Nemesis. He went through the different stages of his mutation to his final form. Which is, it's not really ran on that, but if it's in uh, one shot and they just keep mutating in the final battle, it's kind of get exhausting. It takes extra long. Let's see, next one. The special weapons. The one special weapon it takes to kill the boss. But if you don't have it, it takes extra ammo. Resident Evil, zombie games, some RPGs are good for this. Like if uh, one example is the tyrant in Resident Evil 1. Well, most of the times. If you it was, it was Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 0. If you didn't have the Magnum you was going to have a hard time trying to take down the, any tyrant. Magnum is way better than a shotgun. Gun has less bullets and is easier to pierce. Also, another example from Resident Evil, which is the Regenerators. If you don't have a sniper rifle, you have a hard time. Because these are regenerated if you don't see the parasites inside of them. It's understandable, but it makes it a little hard for to run from this creature. 
Small weak spots. Small weak spots on bosses. Like if, it, <laughs> like oh, his weak spot is right here. You got to aim for right here, or oh, it's on his ankle, or he has to turn around. You got to shoot him in the back. Like those the Golem and Resident Evil, uh, House of the Dead had almost all the bosses had little small weak spots. Uh, yeah, most of them. A lot of horror games that's good for it. Like it has small little clink in their armor. Uh, RPGs are not really good for them, but if you take down one certain body part of a uh, of the boss, it was weakening their defenses. Uh, if this part is regenerating their health or putting up the shields, if you destroy this, the rest of the body falls. Then there's usually if you take out the torso or the head, and the body dies with it, which is understandable. But there's some bosses that has multiple parts, which that's another, another rant I'm talking about, we'll talk about later. Like hydras, or snakes, if, yes, even if you cut off the head, the rest of it will still go. Let's see what's the next part. Sorry, the disorganized. Had it all written down. But I have to go to the list. Multiple HPs. As with shield generation, there's some parts, a lot of parts of the body has multiple HPs. Like the legs, the torso, the head have different HPs or health points. Well, you can take them down individually, or you go for the head or the torso. Or sometimes you have to take down each and every one of them. But it comes with, a g it has cons and pros. Cons, sometimes if you take down one part, it weaken the rest or cripple it. But cons, each part sometimes has its own attack. Break Frontier is good for this. Most RPGs are good for this. <laughs> they have multiple attacks like one arm be slapping you, the foot be stumping you, the head be blowing fire at you, the torso will just be sitting there or something. Uh, it makes it challenging, but it makes it more difficult. Either which way you look at it, let's see. Resurrection. Resurrection and auto heal is a little annoying because you be in the middle of the battle and it auto heal all the way to full health or it resurrect as you get the last hit in. This will give you that one more. Mm. RPGs are good for this. Zombie games are good for this. Even in the middle of the battle while your team is like at the brick of destruction. It will resurrect to half health, 10% health, or even like 10,000. I really hate this in Ray Frontier. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. Like most of the Hero Chronicles, it would be like you let, they hit zero, then they have to resurrect, and you go back up to like, I think it was 10,000 health, most of them. And you got 10 turns to get them back down to zero. Or they will use the same ability as I was in a resurrect. And you have to start all, all over again. Let's do it, please. The turn limit. Some boss battles give you a turn limit before they do the one hit kill. Or something blows up. It's a lot of RPGs. It's really an RPGs. I don't think many other games that did a one turn limit or one move limit before they will cut you off or auto kill you. Mode switch. This is this will be the last one on my list. Mode switch is when they can switch between different modes of attack. Like if you are sitting no. It boosts attacks, defense, and 
HP, uh, shield, piercing, do healer, or berserker, uh, different fractions, uh, jobs, in the RPG world. Oh, even, yeah, even from, even some of the actions, uh, actions, they could change from a brawler to a sniper to a, just straight up guns. It makes it more challenging. Some, some doing a certain a turn based one because turn RPGs to be like first two first few attacks to be if you just attacking then it takes a turn to heal and use defense then they go back to attacking or they switch elements like some of them brave frontiers switch from light to dark elements and they use like the dark attacks or you just switch um, they switch from in a mode And switch between like a darker creature, like a human to turn into a werewolf, or uh, something to go berserk. There's different ways you could choose modes and forms to go intertwine with each other with different attacks, different defenses. Uh, yeah, they add to the defense or the HP. I uh, hope you enjoy my little rant. This is my opinions. If you'd like to discuss more, please hit me up on Facebook or Twitter at BiasWhisper4099. Like and subscribe. Add comments up to the subscription. Uh, you can give me ideas for rants. Give me an idea for games to play. And please enjoy my channel. See you in the next video.